Oh. Good morning, Israel. Good morning, believers. Moving in the eye of the storm, baby. Oh. Um. Your brother, J.D. Nijah. Coffee with J.D. Nijah. Word of truth. With Jeff Deloach. Adonijah. So, <laughs> a couple days of relaxation and um, when it's over, here's J.D. Nijah in the Bible all morning long. Boom, boom, boom. It's like he had the board hit my ribs. He gave me a gave me a punch. I don't know if I'm going to be able to have any more fun in life. I think I'm I think I'm set to um prophesy and and speak to my people and that's about it. I don't know. I can't have any sex. I can't have any family. I can't have any hardly any friends. I can't work. I can't Surf. <laughs> oh. It's like in Ezekiel, we made him lay on his side for... I was going to go into that, but I have so much stuff that I've been studying this morning. Um, it started off with... Um, let me pray real quick. Father God, Heavenly Father, bless this message. The ears that hear it. Um through the deliverance of your son, Jesus Christ, and with the power of the Holy Spirit, make it edifying, full of truth, and to your liking and your will. Amen. So I was going to go home and finish putting all my stuff away. I think I cracked my ribs again. These, this left side has been cracked so many times. It's like, oh, it was hurting before I hit it. But I had a bad fall on the skateboard uh, about three years ago. Broke my collarbone, hit my head, knocked myself out. <laughs> Pretty much cracked this whole side. From what I could tell, the doctor said, yeah, you got some broken ribs there. And it's like, again? But anyhow, so I um, I was thinking about this two-thirds remnant in Zechariah 13. Um, <laughs> I'll just start in 13.1. It's probably going to be a two-parter. This, this Bible study stuff isn't, it's not a shallow thing, but anyhow. Um, and in that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. So I went back where it says uncleanness. Uh, did I lose it already? Um, yeah. Let's see. In um, Isaiah 5 it says, uh, just let me go, go on. So j keep that in mind, the uncleanness. Um, un the uncleanness is going to be... We're going to be made clean again. And it shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they will sh no more be remembered. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. So it men mentions this un uncleanness twice, right? Um, I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirit to pass out of the land. So, 
that's one point that I got to make before we move forward. The prophets and the unclean spirit. Um, do you know why I say I'm a devil, right? I'm a, <laughs> I got horns and a tail. The spirit of prophecy is the spirit of knowing things you shouldn't know. So when Eve took that fruit, that forbidden fruit, she took that fruit. She took that knowledge of good and evil, right? Boom. You dummies. Now you're naked. Now you're sent out from the garden. You and your, you and, you and your man that couldn't control you skedaddle now you're gonna have to suffer so he sent he sent he cast them out of the he cast them out of the garden <laughs> he sent them out get out of here cast them out of the garden if you're following my you, you got to follow my um, Bible teachings um, I'll go back over the same stuff over and over again but if you're not here it's hard to understand what I'm talking about because we're moving on um, <laughs> so get on board the love train baby um, so this unclean spirit of the prophets Salakia this is this is the spirit this unclean spirit is the spirit of good and evil the fruit of the tree of good and evil so what's the prophet? The prophet is the one that understands witchcraft, sorcery, wickedness, evil, but also righteousness, truth, the Lord. It's a um it's the double edged sword. Cuts both ways. That's why Benjamin could shoot from the left hand. He could sling stones from the right or the left. It's two-edged sword. And it shall come to pass that when they shall yet prophesy, his father and mother shall beget him, shall say unto him, You shall not live. For thou speaketh lies in the name of the Lord, and his father and his mother shall beget him, that for that begat him shall thrust him through when he prophesieth. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophet shall be ashamed of every vision, that he prophesieth, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive, but he shall say, I am no prophet, I am only a husband, man, for man taught me to keep cattle from my youth. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? It's the spirit of, look at the chicken skin, it's the spirit of Jesus Christ, it's the spirit of prophecy. Where'd you get the wounds, Mr. Prophet? In your hands. The ones that he got from hanging on the cross, right? And one shall say unto him, What are those wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, Those which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Big part of prophetic scripture right there. Has a lot to say about who the prophet is. He's this one with the unclean spirit. The Lord is is using our own failure to bring forth redemption. He's saying we're going to have to get rid of these prophets. I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. And if you want to study this, Zechariah, you'll, you'll bounce around like I did. You'll bounce around the prophetic books like nobody's business. So, um, then it goes on, and this is the two-thirds will be destroyed part. 13.7 um, of... Zechariah um, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow. 
Who's this fellow? These are the wicked. It's it's hearkening back to the difference between our brother Jesus, who's here to save us, and these people that put him on the cross. The friends that wounded him were his own people, the Jews, right? The Pharisees put him on the cross. He says he's the son of God. And that's what GMS is doing. Putting him back on the cross. They say they love him. They don't love him. They don't even know who his dad is. They don't even know that him and his father are one. They're the same. That is my fellow fellow is my eyes are shot I'm gonna have to st stab myself in the eye um fellow is seven one select here companion he's our companion he's our he's the one the spirit that follows with us the the holy spirit right that's our companion that's our comforter um, against the man that is my fellow, said the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. I will turn my hand upon the little ones. He's trying to gather the people back right now. We've been scattered. He's trying to gather Jerusalem and the people of Israel back right now in I'm one of those shepherds. Um, what can I do except this way? <whistles> Yo. And it came to pass that in all the land, said the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third part shall be left therein. What's this cut off? Why, why is there, why do I have only 50 subscribers? People have been cut off from the word. What I speak is evil to people. They're like, who is this guy? What is he saying? He's a devil? He's doing Bible teachings and he's saying he's got horns and a tail? What's up with that? Yeah. There's a, that the spirit of prophecy is an unclean spirit. And not because it's the spirit of the Lord. It's the Lord came to, to boggle people's minds. He came to, to separate the wheat from the chaff. He came to separate the goats from the, from the sheep. And I will bring a third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried and they shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, this is my people and they shall say, that is my Lord. So that's a jumping off point. That's just a jumping off point. So we go back to, it, it led me back to Isaiah. I'm not gonna pull up the specific scripture that sent me here, but one of those, one of those little sayings had a, had a key notation to it, a B or an A or a C, and it led me back to God clean, cleanses Isaiah. Why, why does Isaiah have to be cleansed? Because he has an unclean spirit. So, in Isaiah six, the holy and glorious Lord. So first he sees. In the year of King Uzziah, the King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each had six wings, twain covered the face, twain covered the feet, and twain did fly. One cried unto another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is 
full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. So Isaiah saw a vision. He's like, oh, crapola. And I've seen these things in the clouds. I've seen them. So I know what he's, what he's talking about. It's creepy when the Lord starts showing you things. He's like, look, look, what do you see? Oh, oh. And if I had those pictures, I'd show you, but you're just going to have to believe me or not. God cleanses Isaiah. Verse 5. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. What's he saying? He knows he's a dirty scoundrel. He knows he's dirty. He knows he's dirty, dirty. I speak. I speak witchcraft. I am witchcraft. I'm around a bunch of witchcraft people. That's what he's saying. Fuck. Ah. Now what do I do? Now I know. Now, now I know not only evil. I know good. I know righteousness. Ah. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of these seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth, the sack of my mouth. Go back to, um, I'm not going to try and remember it because I could be sitting here all day going, oh, when Benjamin and the, and the boys went to Joseph to get food during the famine, and Benjamin was given five times the helping because he's got five times the spirit from Joseph that was given from the one who had the visions. It was in the sack, the mouth of his sack. So it's hard to follow unless you've been here because I, I bring these things up. The Bible, bink, 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 it all connects. Sack of the mouth. So he's saying, he touched the coal to my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and mine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Seven is atoned for or covered. So when I say, you got no horns and you got no tail, they hardly believe we existed. Is it wrong to believe in the city of gold? Um, that's what I. That's what Isaiah is saying right here. He's like, I know I'm just a dirty devil, and now I know good as well as I know evil, and I'm gonna have to speak, but I'm gonna be speaking things that people don't understand, and that people are gonna take me as a devil because they're gonna be like. Where did he get that information? How does he know? That's evil. He's Beelzebub. Because it, it goes on to say, Isaiah's message rejected. Verse 8 of Isaiah 6. And it reads, Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us. Am I doing this for me? Am I doing this for JD Nija? I got love in my heart for the people, the cattle. I'm coming, I'm coming to round up the cattle and, and cast a net. I'm sending forth a net. I'm sending a boat, a rescue boat. I'm sending forth, forth a, a helicopter to pluck you off the mountain off the top of your house in the flood, whatever. It's a metaphor for, hello. Lord's here to save you. Get with it, get with. 
Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear you indeed, but understand not. And see indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy. Burden, heavy. Burden, it's a burden. This word is going to be a, a burden on the people because they're not going to be able to hear it. And when they look at me, they're not going to be able to see. I got no horns and they got no tails. Um, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. How do you convert? You say, I am among a people of wicked lips. I am a, among a bunch of unclean, dirty scoundrels. But I know where righteousness is. It's in my, uh, my heavenly Father, and in His only begotten Son. And I can feel it through the Holy Spirit who came into me and said, come this way. We're going home. Then I said, Lord, how long? How long is this going to go on? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the house without man and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Who's, who's far away? Everyone. Is there anyone not nuzzling up to me, cuddling up to me going, Oh, I love you, J.D. Nyjah. You're the best. <laughs> I got to realize it's not going to happen. <laughs> and the Lord, verse 12, Isaiah 6. And the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten. So that's the message I tried to do this morning on Bethlehem. So this all ties together. It's like, it's so hard to explain in, in videos and... Um, so he's talking about eating. Eating. What do you eat? You eat the bread. And I did that video this morning, but it cut off because I didn't have enough storage. And it cut me off right in the middle. And so it's like, I'm not going to download it because it cut me off right in the middle. But anyhow, maybe we'll go into that real quick. I'll go back to that. The bread, so we're, I'm giving this bread. Benjamin, okay, let's just go on first. But it shall be a tenth. That's where it goes back to um, that part in Zechariah where two-thirds, one-third. I don't know why it goes into a tenth, but that it led me back here. The one-third, there'll be a tenth that shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves... So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. <laughs> Do you get it? What, one more time? One more time. But yet in it shall be a tenth. It shall return. It's right now. That this one third people who will be called by my name, they will return and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak whose substance is in them. Holy Spirit is in them. When they cast their leaves, I'm, I was sent to call. I'm casting the leaves of this these trees. Eat, eat of the tree of life. That's what he's talking about. Eat of the tree of life. It's time to live. Whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. What does that mean? The seed, the ones of Judah, of Benjamin, Bethlehem, Ephrata, of the bread, the word, are here to speak to you. 
I can't do this message any other way besides, hello, there's no other way for me to do it. I have the spirit of, of prophecy. I can't go, oh, and, uh, I'm not that way. All right, I'll be back. We'll talk about some other stuff involving this. J.D. Nigel, I'm out.